a lot of possibilities are being thrown in the air as we've entered the post-regular season, if you will. Um, but what do we think the Lions' future is with Jared Goff? I, I'll tell you what. So I thought about this a lot yesterday. Me too. It was a tough one. And I looked at the Lions' options post-June 1st. And if they trade, just hear me out. Don't freak out. I'm not saying you have to trade or you should trade Jared Goff. But I just want you guys, this is part of the whole story. Post June 1st, this offseason and the next and the next, you can trade him for a $5 million cap hit and you save $26 million on the cap. That's a big deal. Now, no. what team is willing to eat that cap? What team? I mean, the whole deal. I, I don't even think the Lions should even do it. Even if they wanted to pursue somebody like a Derek Carr. What are you going to have to give up to get Derek Carr? Keep in mind, yes, it was Matthew Stafford. But the Rams gave you two first-round picks right. and a third. Just to get rid of Jared Goff. What are you going to have to do to get rid of Jared Goff? Maybe just a second, maybe a first, who knows? But I, I kind of, I'm not comfortable giving away draft capital right now. I want to give Brad Holmes as much as he can get. So, the future of Jared Goff, honestly, is he's the starting quarterback of this team next year. And given the schedule they have next year, which we have not gone in depth on too much on the show yet, but that schedule has eight, nine, maybe even ten wins. Wow. Ten wins? Yeah. Think? Yeah. I know it's an easy it is an easier schedule. We can get that. You play shit. the AFC East and the NFC yep. East. You should lose to the Bills, maybe to the Patriots. Yeah. You should lose to the Cowboys, but they're the Cowboys. Speaking so you could go four and in the NFC East and two and two in the AFC East, and you're six and two. Haven't even gotten to And then if you yet. go three and three in your division, you're already nine and five. Yep. Yeah. You have three games left on the year. Figure out how to win one of them. It's not that far off to me. It really isn't. Now again, let me. I, I clarified from the beginning. I hope you open your ears and listen. One, I'm not saying you trade Jared Goff. And two, I understand the cap hit implications for the opposing team. I think it's an impossible trade to pull off. But damn it, if you look at this, if you look at the cap hit, you only eat five million dollars for the next two to three years. If you trade him post June first. Now I, again, I don't think anybody's taken on that contract, and you can release him for the same cap hit, not this off season, but the next. So, what is the future of the Detroit Lions at quarterback? I think we all are kind of out in the loop right now. We're out of the loop. Is Brad Holmes committed to Jared Goff long term? He was part of the team that drafted him, right? Or is it? We're going to see what we can get out of Jared Goff these next two seasons. And if we reach a peak, which I expect them to reach because it's Jared Goff, then we're going to go out and find our quarterback in the draft, which is fine. But I do caution you. You would have to pull an Andy Reid-esque type of regular season and postseason performance to earn that kind of time to go three full seasons with Jared Goff then move on and draft the future quarterback. That's a long time. Yeah. So after three seasons of Jared Goff, if you haven't been to the playoffs once, and then you want to com- you want to sell the ownership and the fan base, well, now we're going to go after our quarterback? No, because there's probably going to be one quarterback from this class that works out. There's probably going to be one or two from next year and one or two from the year after. It happens every single year. You don't have three years to sit and wait for Jared Goff. You don't. And if you see the Jared Goff that you saw towards the end of last season, yeah, that's nice. It really is. But I I take it with a pinch of salt because I also saw what the first part of the season looked like. And I saw what the last three seasons in Los Angeles looked like, and that was under Sean McVay. Yeah. So Detroit... Identify what your ceiling is. Have I identified the ceiling of Brad Holmes? No, I think it's extremely high, though. I am happy. Have I identified the ceiling of Dan Campbell? No. How high is it? Honestly, I am not sure. He could be really bad. He could be really good. 
at this point in time, nobody can make a fair assessment. Right. Other than <clears throat> since he took over play calling, the team looked much better offensively, and they turned it around towards the end of the year. I'm not saying they were one of the better teams in the NFL, but damn it, they looked at least competent and watchable. I'll take it. And then I move to the quarterback. What is Jared Goff's ceiling? Technically, Super Bowl loss. But that has so many variables. Considering he only threw one touchdown pass in that postseason, I don't think you get to the Super Bowl throwing one touchdown pass in yeah. today's NFL. Yeah. All right. So that's that. And there was a pass interference call that wasn't called in the NFC title game. I don't have to get into. Saints still can't <laughs> sleep at night. So my point is here. What does the future look like with Jared Goff? I think he's your starting quarterback next year. I think that's pretty obvious. I don't think that'll ever change. And we'll see what happens from there, Jeff. Yeah, I, I think you hammered it right on the head. And I think my point, I was going to go with it, is we understand what Jared Goff is. Like, we've been through this. We've been talking about Jared Goff ever since we acquired him. Jared Goff, solid, middle-of-the-pack quarterback. Uh, nothing wrong with it, by the way. Nothing wrong with that. It's just the reality. And it, and it depends on what your expectations are for Jared Goff. How much of an uphill battle are you trying to have him fight? I mean, that's really what it is. And with the Lions, um, how often are you going to have him climb out of that hole? That, that's the question. With the Rams, didn't really need to climb out of a whole lot of holes. Um, usually they had the lead, didn't have to climb back a whole lot. You saw it. Like, talk about good years by Jared Goff. We always talk about his first three years. That second year, 28 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. That third year, 32 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. And then kind of that decline after. And we saw a good season this year. I just don't think you really know what you're getting from season to season with Jared Goff. But the fact is, Jared Goff's solid. I mean, he, he is he – is, a quarterback you can have on your team, and if you have a, a excellent coaching, excellent play calling, and you know a, a good roster, above average roster, he can he can get you a playoff win, I believe. But there's limitations to Jared Goff, and that's not really who I see in a franchise quarterback. Someone who I, when I think of a franchise quarterback, I think of someone who overcomes your team's deficiencies. That's just who I think of. Quarterback who's willing now. There's a certain extent. I mean, if you want to bring up Stafford, there's a certain extent of overcoming you can do. Only a certain guy can overcome so no, much. No, I think there's <laughs> there's a difference between overcoming a roster and, and a, a team yeah. and overcoming an organization That's and its history. That's the difference. Like, Big difference. Like, the quarterback, when I think of a franchise quarterback, I think of someone who can overcome roster deficiencies. And, you know, I don't want my quarterback to be, you know, over accommodated for to, to be able to just to win games so with jared he's great i mean you have him you're stuck with him and, and there's no problem with that he's a guy you can keep your ship afloat if you will um but for me i i see jared as the guy the, the alex smith for the chiefs if you will like and now we're not in the playoffs yet but i i see it so you draft your quarterback sitting behind jared goff and then there's the <clears throat> passing of the torch that, that's how i see it jared to me Yes, he needs more weapons. Yes, it was, it was, it's hard to evaluate him this year because of what was around him. But then again, I have five years of – four years, five years of, of film on Jared Goff. So it's not like I'm only taking this season. I know what Jared Goff is. We've seen it every single year. So if the roster gets tremendously better, he can win you some ball games. But to me, is he the future? Probably not because there's, there's a ceiling with Jared Goff. And that's, but you're that's not surreal. drafting a quarterback this year, and I no. think that's really the whole point to this. No, you got another year or two. You're not drafting a quarterback this offseason. And if you are, I mean, I would genuinely be surprised. I'm so serious about this. I am not expecting Holmes to pull a trigger on a quarterback. Now, if it happens in the third, fourth round, I wouldn't be. But I'm talking first, second round. That would blow my mind. I would not expect it. I'm not sure how I'd react Friday morning after the draft, honestly. I'm not sure how, how I would react in the moment to the Lions drafting a quarterback, whether it's with the second, the 25th, 26th, whatever the second pick is, and then in the second round. I'm not sure what that reaction looks like. And I don't expect it to happen. But yes, people, reality check. Jared Goff has limitations. You have to accept that. Cool. Build a team around him. Try to hide his mistakes as much as possible. That's what the Lions are going to be doing. And I think in 2023 is when you draft your quarterback. I think that class has much more upside than this class, but I could be totally wrong. Been wrong before. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. But I think we just a mutual understanding right now. Goff's the quarterback next year. Accept it. Build a talented roster and see where you can go. But Detroit, I warn you, don't find your positions. Or don't find yourselves in a position where you are the Cleveland Browns 
and Baker Mayfield's your quarterback. God bless. Don't find yourselves in a position. Now, granted, Dallas does win the division. So I'm not going to talk too much about Dak. But don't find yourself in a position where you feel like you're overpaying for a quarterback. I could never overpay Mahomes. I could never overpay Herbert, Josh Allen, right. Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray. Franchise quarterback. Even though Kyler Murray's scaring me a little bit because of his size. But the point is Russell Wilson, Brady, Rodgers, Breeze, all these quarterbacks, even from the past. When you have the guy, you pay him. Right. Now, is it more convenient if they take less of a salary cap hit and they restructure their deal? Sure. I'd love my quarterback to do that, but I don't expect him to do that. But I expect my ownership group <laughs> to be able to identify the difference between Dak Prescott, forty million a year, Patrick Mahomes, forty million a year. Bingo. And if I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, that absolutely terrifies me. But if I'm myself, which I am, <laughs> it makes me absolutely crack up <laughs> because the Dallas Cowboys absolutely suck. Whew. Russell Westbrook getting benched. Last night, <clears throat> the Cowboys yep. debacle. Troy Aikman now calling out his CD Lamb. Life, life can't get better. No, it can't. All I'm missing, all I'm missing, is for the Detroit Lions to win a division and host a home playoff game and win that game. Now, it could happen in three years. Could happen in fifty years. I don't know. I may not even be alive for it, <clears throat> but I'm waiting for it. <clears throat> I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man maddie i do have one question for you though oh, boy. real quick before we get off this topic one what'd you think of jared goff this year and two people in the chat are suggesting they're only keeping jared goff because of his girlfriend is that a, <laughs> is that fact or fiction no well, i'm gonna start with question number two that's fiction <laughs> <laughs> She's great. She's beautiful, but Jesus. Anyways, um, I thought he had, I mean, I thought he had a good season with the Lions. I, it started off terribly. We all saw it. But I also think that's adjust, an adjustment that you make when you come to a new team. He had no idea what he, he was getting up against. You can only practice what you can in the offseason. Once you hit the field, though, that's, that's when the real Lions come out. So it, I thought he did what he could, and and he improved and that's all that we could ask for um so towards the end of the season we saw some good things come out of him and i think that there is a little bit of potential that he will do well next year but i i thought he had a good season i'm i'm glad where we left off was i happy in the beginning absolutely not but i don't think anybody was however when you show improvement like that and you show that you can make something with it's the like team being that in you a have, marriage yeah <laughs> you know you just come home some days and you want to beat the living crap out of them you just do Come home, you just want to, you know? But you don't. 